on the menu today. Let's see which one works. Back to you, Perifractic. Welcome. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, and Perifractic was playing with his cockpit arcade machine, his Atari Star Wars cockpit arcade. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you there. But yes, this is, of course, the Atari Star Wars that myself and Shawnee Fractic made, well, a long time ago in, a, well, in the same galaxy. That was, of course, before the Bad evil boy. Order 66. Oh, no, COVID 19 wrecked boy. havoc, wreaked havoc on planet Earth. But for now, there is a problem that has been uh, bugging me. Uh, ever since I started playing with it, playing with the machine. This, the steering yoke, it's really good. However, sometimes it's really bad in that it just completely sticks uh, in the top right corner of the game when you're playing the game. Let me give you an example of how that looks. And yeah, instead of the original game, for this test I'm playing The Empire Strikes Back. Strikes crack. He could destroy us. We have forced me with him. And I was surprised to discover that this game's actually even more fun than the original. We picked up something outside of this. Gonna check it out, won't take long. Thanks, hun. Uh, Han. And when we shoot the tops of the probe droids like this, it actually stops their ability to tell the Empire all about our base. Is a hidden base after all. Thanks, Annie. Use your harpoon control cable. Okay, look, we'll do. Want to see some trick fr frying? <laughs> flying? Uh, the shield doors must be closed. Well, it could be frying yolks later. There's nowhere to go. Does anyone know the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field? Turns out it was one to one. But Sog's Law, the controller's actually behaving itself now and not getting stuck in. Oh! <laughs> there, it's just done it. So the cursor is stuck, so I've never been able to get to the top of the high scores. Poodoo. And that's not the only issue with their yoke. You might remember the questionable soldering quality found during our original install, presumably done by this guy. So I think we need a better quality yoke. And luckily for us, Glenn Planamento from Glenn's Retro Show has actually created a better steering yoke that is backward compatible, A, with the real cockpit arcade machine, and not that this one isn't real, but it's also compatible with this, the arcade one-up version that we converted here. And I've got the yoke inside this box. Uh, just before we uh, unbox it fully, or teaser, uh, let's just un unravel these wires here. Just, just, un just unravel. I'm just going to pull these apart here. At the center it could, should be... Do that in a future episode. But yes, here it is. So it explains how this gives us a lot of advantages, including non-contact mechanical structure with magnetic sensing technology to drive the yoke controller, no gears, no potentiometer like the old one used to have. This maximizes precision, durability, and the stability of the yoke controller. It uses the standard USB interface, Recognized as a gamepad on Windows, etc. And physical inertia centering mechanism. All the buttons are recognized as independent gamepad controller buttons. Complete metal structure, even a mouse mode and vertical direction reverse switching. And it's ready for our arcade one-up Star War arcade. Star Wars! But of course also compatible with the original 1983 Star War arcade. 
So we are going to make sure our Arcade 1UP Star War machine is power off. And we're going to unplug the existing yoke connectors from the Arcade 1UP machine PCB. Which reminds me, if you need great quality PCBs starting at just 5 bucks, we recommend PCB Way! Because as we all know, PCB stands for Pilot Controllers Broken. Well, not this one, the old one. Doesn't it? Anyway, then we're going to dismount the original yoke, mount this yoke using the existing mounting hole, plug the yoke harness into the PCB following the table below, and it's ready to go. S5, S4, S3, S2, S1. And S foils in attack position. Good try, Danny Bye. Yahoo! You're all clear, kid! Good try, I'm going in. Oh, 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 this is heavy. That is a quality piece of kit. But eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed a small problem with the yoke. There's no logo, for copyright reasons, of course. So, let's make our own. I have a new Compact Smart cutting machine, my new toy. Let's get designing. All you have to do is type Atari logo into your Google search or your preferred search engine, of course. Click on images, download your favorite version. For me, it's just the basic black and white logo. Load it into the Smart Cutting Machines program. Set your desired size and cut away. I took the time to measure the yoke to make sure that we had the perfect fit. So now we are back to our transfer tape, our weeding tool, our scraper, and our original pieces. Now that we have weeded all the additional scraps, it's time to put it on the transfer tape. And just like that, we have two Atari logos ready to go. Let's see which one works. Back to you, Perifractic. Who is that woman? Does anyone know? Only yoking. I should add that Lady Fratic is also a seamstress and made this custom fit cushion for the arcade too, which gets the seal of poor approval. But would you guys like to see more of her, including dedicated Lady Fratic videos with no perifractic in sight? Not bloody likely. Well, even if you would, unlike me, she currently has a real job, or three, but if we reach our Patreon Lady Fractic goal, it'll enable her to instead do more stuff for you at Perifractic's Retro Lady Fractic. Lady Fractic's Retro Recipes. But from sticking it to employers, back to these stickers. And let's try this let's try this pink one first.
Switch five, I'm going in. Use the false group. <laughs> What? It's only good when she does it. Fine. Support below. He could destroy us. Yeah, I could. <laughs> I could destroy you. Yeah, but be careful. Oh, I just... <laughs> you can't script this stuff. <laughs> Fighting over the yoke. It's a bit concerning how juddery the cursor is here, but Puppy Fratic is about to inform me that that's because of the new yoke's more granular resolution, and it only affects the menu screen. Hello. Thank you for telling me all that. <laughs> But before the big playtest, there's just time to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. Not only are they huge fans of the retro community, as you can probably tell from some of their logos, but Linode make it easy to give your creations their own personal space on the internet. No matter what skill level you're at, or what technology stack you use, Linode can help your ideas come to life on the web. Independently owned and founded on a love of Linux, open source technologies and the community that surrounds them, Linode has you covered. 
And if you need to scale your business, or let's say your Atari VCS app goes viral, Linode can help reliably serve your multiple visitors too. And unlike entry-level hosting services that lock you into their platform, ooh, nasty, Linode gives you full back-end access to customize and control your server to fit your needs. And if you run into any trouble setting up, Linode comes with amazing 24-7 customer support too. Sign up today using my link in the description and we'll give you $100 60-day credit on your new Linode account. Good try, Ben, bro. And as promised, it really is silky smooth in the actual game here. I'd say it's about 10% smoother on screen than the original yoke looked. As for the feel of the yoke itself, it really does feel like a proper bit of kit in your hands. I think uh, Lou Skywalker would be happy with this in his X-Wing. And it's definitely more sturdy than the original with a better bounce back to center. And no top right cursor fault so far, like I had before, fingers crossed. And I say all of that without any disrespect to Arcade 1UP. Putting together what they did for the money that they did is fantastic, really. And you get what you pay for, which is fair enough. It just means that this is a worthy optional upgrade and highly recommended. My only small complaint is about the buttons. The good news is these two extra function buttons on the back that you can reach around to and map to things like start or coin. However, for me, the main fire buttons feel slightly less rounded on the fingers, so they're a little less comfy, but I learned to just hold them a bit differently and use the front buttons too, so it doesn't really detract too much from the overall improvements. I also found I was getting higher scores by using the front buttons as well. Anyway, overall, Retro Recipes gives this egg sighting yolk four and a half chips out of five. Mm, I do like to dip chips in yolk, don't you? Anyway, the link is in the description, so go give Glenn your support. As for us, I'm off to finally, hopefully, get to the top of the high score chart, and we'll be back soon with another excellent retro recipe. Until then, thanks for watching, support below, and cheerio. Testing, testing one, two, three. Yeah, that's cool, huh? Thank you for your comment.